Hello friends, press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon for more such easy videos. Hello friends, in this video I will be talking about the elements of circulatory system. When we talk about circulatory system we need to understand that there are three main elements involved. First is the blood, second will be blood vessels and third is the heart. So when we talk about blood, in this video I will be discussing about all the components of the blood. With respect to blood vessels, we need to understand the arteries, veins and the capillaries. And heart, we need to understand the entire structure and the pumping mechanism. Whenever we talk about blood, we need to understand some important characteristics of blood. Very first, that the blood is a fluid connective tissue. When I talk about fluid connective tissue, it is the only connective tissue available in liquid state. When you talk about blood, it is mesodermal in origin with respect to germ layer, ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm, it is mesodermal. In normal adult, there will be 5 to 6 liters of blood in his entire body, which is approximately 8% of the total body weight. pH of the blood it will be 7.4, which is alkaline in nature. I can say it is salty to taste. When we talk about the viscosity you need to understand that the blood is heavy so it's a viscous fluid the blood has hemoglobin and this hemoglobin is very important it acts as a buffer buffer is a liquid which maintains the pH of the blood the pH is maintained by hemoglobin it is brilliant red in color when you talk about blood let's take hundred percent of the blood is divided into two major components so if we centrifuge the blood we find two things one we find the plasma that is 55 percent and the precipitate will be all the corpuscles that is 45 percent so if we centrifuge we get two layer the precipitate and the supernatant when we talk about the supernatant plasma it is actually a straw colored viscous fluid the ph of the plasma will be same as the ph of the blood when we talk about plasma what exactly it is made up of so we say it is made up of water and it is water is 90 percent and it is made up of solute which will be 10 percent when you talk about solute it is also further divided into two parts where seven percent will be all the plasma proteins and three percent will be all the substances the various types of plasma protein that is found in the blood it's important question actually that comes in neat exam also the first is serum albumin then we have serum globulin we have prothrombin fibrinogen so these are the important plasma proteins and we have heparin heparin is an anticoagulant that will prevent the blood to clot inside the body other substances that are found in the solute will be nutrients like glucose amino acids metabolic waste like lactic acids ions and hormones even nitrogenous waste is also present in the other substances when you talk about corpuscles there are three major types of corpuscles rbc wbc and platelets rbc is red blood corpuscles wbc is white blood corpuscles and platelets has no other name when you talk about serum serum is nothing but the plasma minus fibrinogen so from the plasma if you remove the plasma protein that is fibrinogen we get serum let's understand the various characteristics of rbc wbc and platelets here i have given it in a tabular form so that it will be easy for you to remember as well as to compare so each characteristic will be discussed with respect to your NEET as well as board exam let's understand the first characteristic is other name rbc stands for erythrocyte erythro means red cytes means cell WBC stands for leukocyte. Leuco means white, cyte means cell. Platelet stands for thrombocytes. Thrombo means clot and cyte means cell. When we look at the shape of the RBC, we say it is circular and it is biconcave. The shape of WBC is amoeboid shape because of diapedesis. Platelets, they are round and biconvex in shape. When we talk about the nucleus so rbc initially have nucleus but once they get matured enough the nucleus is absent in wbc nucleus is present and in platelets nucleus is absent when we talk about the diameter of rbc 
so it is 7 micrometer in diameter and 2.5 micrometer in thickness with respect to WBC it is 8 to 15 micrometer depending on the type of WBC whereas platelets it is 2.5 to 5 micrometer in diameter when we talk about the counts the number of RBC is present so the number of RBC in male will be 5.1 to 5.8 million per cubic millimeter of blood whereas in female the RBC count is 4.3 to 5.2 million per cubic millimeter of blood so in case of male there is more RBC than female whereas WBC it is 5000 to 9000 per cubic millimeter of blood common for both male and female in platelets there are 2 to 5 lakhs of platelets present in per cubic millimeter of blood so the count is the very important part of the blood characteristics when we talk about the lifespan so the lifespan of RBC is 120 days WBC 3 to 4 days platelets 5 to 10 days when we talk about the formation the process of formation of RBC is called as erythropoiesis erythro means red and poiesis means formation the process of formation of WBC is leukopoiesis and platelets is thrombopoiesis thrombo means platelets and poiesis means formation same for WBC also if there is more number of RBC than the normal range it is called as polycythemia and more number of WBC than the normal range it is leukocytosis more number of platelets than the normal range it is called as thrombocytosis leukocytosis can also be called as leukemia or blood cancer if there is less number of RBC it is called as erythrocytopenia less number of WBC it is called as leukopenia and less number of platelets and normal range is thrombocytopenia the word penia here means less there is less number of required RBC WBC of platelets where RBCs are formed so we can say in children the RBCs are formed in liver and spleen but in adult it is formed in bone marrow that is the red bone marrow when we talk about WBC it is formed in bone marrow again it's a white bone marrow or yellow bone marrow where WBCs are formed it is also formed in the lymph nodes as well as peers patches when you talk about platelets the platelets are formed in bone marrow when we talk about the destroying like once the lifespan is over where they get destroyed so all the RBCs they are destroyed in liver or spleen spleen is regarded as the graveyard of RBC WBCs are destroyed in liver, lymph nodes or by a process of phagocytosis. Phago means solid, cytosis means engulfment where the platelets they dry and they form scab. Other important characteristic RBCs they have hemoglobin so in blood we need to see the hemoglobin count also. So the hemoglobin in male is 13 to 18 gram per 100 ml of blood and in female it is 11.5 to 16.5 gram per 100 ml of blood and in case of WBC they show diapedesis. Diapedesis is the ability of the WBCs to squeeze out through the narrow capillaries to give defense action. Hope friends you have understood the concept of the blood and if you are new to the channel don't forget to subscribe and give a like if you have understood the video. Till then, this is Sunil sir saying goodbye. Thank you very much.